today we're going to talk about lab reports. So I've got some top tips on writing the lab report. If you are studying an undergraduate degree in psychology, it's more than likely that you'll be writing lab reports. It's pretty inevitable at the moment um, for psychology degrees. It's an important part of psychology training, which is conducting laboratory experiments. Some people love writing lab reports. Some people are indifferent to writing lab reports. Fuck it, man. Can't be worried about that shit. Life goes on, man. And some people, like me, really don't like writing lab reports at all. So I've got three top tips. And tip number one is make sure you write in the third person. What does that mean? Well, the third person is all about pronouns. The first person uses pronouns like I, me, um, so I would say, I am presenting to the camera, I am making a podcast. The third person refers to pronouns like them or him or her, or we could say, or the role. So in this instance, it would be the presenter is creating a podcast. Henceforth, you're to refer to yourself only in the third person. Right. Okay, so I... What? No. What? So instead of saying, I am listening, you say, Caesar is listening, or, or Caesar listens. Makes you seem more mental. So when you're writing a lab report, you refer to yourself in a role. You don't use the first, uh, don't use personal pronouns. You don't say, I conducted an experiment. You refer to your role. So what you will write is, the experimenter conducted the study, or the researcher conducted the experiment. Now this feels weird. It, it's weird saying it, and it feels weird to write it. Um, it's unusual. You do hear people talking in the third person. They tend to be people who've got a tremendous sense of self-importance, like politicians. There's nobody that feels stronger about the intelligence community and the CIA than Donald Trump. Um, it could also be celebrities, and in that instance, people's identity is their brand, so their name is the brand, and so they're constantly wanting to reinforce the brand by referring to their name rather than using a personal pronoun. Oh no, it's the Kylie Jenner. I've just also always wanted to say that, I don't know why. Now, it is weird talking like that and writing like that, but when you think about what a laboratory experiment is in the sense of the scientific paradigm it's working within, in relation to psychology, then it's not weird at all, because it's positivism. The scientific paradigm is positivism. Positivism says that truth exists independently of us. It's, it, it exists in the outside world. So we accumulate knowledge, and that knowledge is objective. It doesn't matter what my personal beliefs are. It doesn't matter what my politics are. It doesn't matter what my life experience is. Me discovering truth is independent of those things. All I need is the skills to be able to conduct research. So in this paradigm, it doesn't really matter who the researcher is. So we don't want to invite questions like, who was the researcher? What did they believe? What was their religion? And uh, what was their politics? So we try to avoid those questions because we don't think they're valid questions. I actually think they're extremely valid questions. But in positivism, nah. We don't think those things affect that thing that is being observed. So that's why we don't use the personal pronoun, because we don't want to engage in that sort of personal level of analysis about who the researcher is. So we use the third person. We just say the researcher. Now, actually, the sweet spot in positivism is we can get people to forget that there's actually a researcher there at all. And that's where you use the passive tense in your sentence construction. So passive tense would be something, rather than saying the researcher conducted an experiment, you would remove the researcher entirely in your sentence construction and you would just say an experiment was conducted. It just happened. So that's the convention. So once you understand the paradigm, then you understand why we don't use the personal pronoun. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is also in relation to writing style, and in this instance it's about your use of the verb tense. Whether you write about things in the past, in the present, or in the future. 
You are too concerned with what was and what will be. There's a saying, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. What you need to do is write about the thing using the tense that describes when it happened. So when you're writing about an experiment you conducted, keep it all in the past tense. So when you're writing about a hypothesis that you developed, past tense. If you're writing about literature that's been, uh, that exists out there, it's been written about, it's all in the past tense because that stuff's already been written. Occasionally you'll write in the present tense and that's when you're talking about the state of the literature at the moment and what's happening in the research community in regards to this area of investigation, then that can be the present tense. And you'd only shift into the future tense when you're describing what you would like to see happen in regards to research in relation to your research question. Typically you just mention that stuff in your discussion. So in your introduction, and in your method section, and in the reporting of your results, it's all pretty much past tense, occasionally present tense, when you're referring to the present state of the literature. So keep your tenses um, reflective of when the things happen that you're describing. Don't mix your tenses up too much, okay? So keep some consistency there. The final, Tip is in relation to how you handle the truth. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! What you want to avoid are statements like, this proves that, or there is a definite link between this and that, uh, we know for certain that. Basically, you want to avoid anything that would suggest that you are putting forward an absolute truth. So saying that you've discovered something to be true. You don't do that in experiments. So in, in experiments, all we can do is say that we think something is probable. We either think something is probably true or probably untrue. We don't definitively say it is definitely true or definitely false. So what we're dealing with is probabilities. So avoid saying things like, this experiment proves that such and such is the case. Avoid the word proof. And if you're going to use the word significant, make sure that you only use the term significant if you're using significance testing. That's where you test to see if the level of probability is high enough for us to have good, a good level of confidence that this thing actually did kind of happen. And it's probably not so much due to chance. So avoid the word significant unless you're using significant tests and avoid the word proof. So those are my three top tips for writing a lab report and uh, best of luck if you're writing one just now. See you next time. Cheers.